All right, for this video, we're gonna get this old Ruger revolver cleaned up. So um, I scored on this today. Uh, this is an old Ruger 22 caliber single six, and it's the old three screw revolver. Thought that old that old revolver that uh, you know, sounds so good when you cock it. I scored on this. So I stopped off at a local gun shop today, walked over to the used gun section like I always do, and sitting in the top shelf of the glass cabinet set this revolver. First thing I looked at, serial number. Serial number indicates to me, man, this thing was uh, before 1960. Sure enough, right there, 59. That's the first thing. Second thing, very rare hard rubber grips in top-notch shape. Uh, then, yeah, in looking at it, I checked the action. The action's tight. I looked a few other things over, and it went home with me. So what we're going to do, we're going to check this revolver real quick, and then we're going to just pull the cylinder. We're not going to go real deep. We're going to get this cleaned up to shoot. And along the way, I'll show you some things I looked at. Let you check it out, and we'll get it cleaned up. So first thing we got to do, we have to uh, go ahead and check this bad boy. The old three screws first click that's your safety don't rely on that as your safety carry five one the uh, cylinder under the hammer will be empty so there's the first click second click and now we have cylinder free spin now you can open the loading gate and there's something I'm going to show you about this revolver as we creep through this video showing you that this cylinder is actually the the, the correct cylinder for this revolver not by other means in which way we could do that but I'm talking how the patina matches the revolver so okay it's a six shooter so what you want to do check more than just six cylinders there's one two three four five six don't stop there go a couple more okay there we go uh, actively check it don't passively check it so we know it's clear right so um, so when I saw this serial number okay it was made in 1959 I'm looking at it I looked at the grips man the grips are outstanding just outstanding by looking at these grips not one chip on them. Um, I knew right then it had never been dropped. A lot of times a revolver when it's dropped it'll it'll chip the grips. And so based on the over uh, overall rustic look of this revolver you might think it's been abused hard. Well okay the, the grips are in great shape. Obviously has been dropped I'm looking this thing over. Okay, it's tight. It's very tight. The sight, okay, isn't bent from being dropped. The crown is in excellent condition. Okay, it hasn't been dropped. This is the original bluing matching the barrel. So the ejector housing hasn't been damaged. This revolver. It's tight. So upon looking it over, I wanted to try the action, and I did. Let's see how the action is. Is it tight? Now it's tight. I want you to watch something. I'm going to show you this. Before I show you this, I'll tell you this. A lot of times on these old revolvers, they actually inscribed the last three digits of the serial number on the face of the cylinder. We're going to take a look at this when I get it pulled apart. I haven't really had this apart to look at it yet. We'll see if this uh, serial number, the last three, is on this cylinder. That's how we can match it up. Not all of them were that way, but most were. Um, uh, and I shouldn't say most. Just some of them were. That's all I know. But now, I'm going to show you one way we know this is the actual uh, cylinder for this revolver and 
it will show us that this was never really beat around. Watch this. Watch the cylinder. Watch it match up to the loading gate and the ejector housing in the frame. Keep your eye on it. See that? Now watch. Aha. This revolver was sitting in a holster or something that was vibrating for a long time under the seat of a vehicle for a long time. Okay? It's not even rusted. So it wasn't moisture. Okay? That's all. Okay, so it wasn't ever dropped, it wasn't beat up, it sat for a long time. Now, it didn't come with the, the Magnum revolver. I don't know if this particular one had it, I'm assuming it probably did, and I don't care if I have it, because if I want to shoot a Magnum, I, I have my big bores, my, and my 38 calibers, my 357 mag, I can shoot those. I just enjoy these for the collector status, and I like to shoot them, just for what they are. So we know that it's, it's sat, the action is tight, it's very tight. It's just as tight and as crisp as a new one I could get off the shelf today. And these grips are in outstanding condition. So guess what we have? We have a really good revolver and the price was right. So let's go ahead and... Now that we know it's clear, let's pull it apart. So to pull it apart, okay, one click, two clicks. Now, cylinder free spins. So, to remove that cylinder, open the loading gate and take your this index finger from your left hand and you can push that base pin latch in and out like that, you see? Okay, when we push it in, now this pin will remove. But I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes, if you put the least amount of force against that cylinder, that pin won't come out. You push that cylinder in, and guess what? Okay? So don't force the base pin. Make sure you're not... See how I'm not touching the cylinder? That is how I hold all of my revolvers when I pull that base pin. Okay, so now I'm like that, and then I push that in, and look. Okay? Put the base pin down. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you... That, that base pin, um, <laughs> it's dry. It's really dry. So we're gonna we're, we're gonna get this thing. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at this. All right, I'm looking at this cylinder. We're gonna get this thing all polished up. Man, it's gonna be a good shooter. Okay, this is really good. Okay, I'm gonna put my light on this. I'm gonna I want to point something. When I get the light on this, I want you to look at right here. Right here, right here, right here, right here, and right here. This is something that I want you to look at when you're looking at uh, any of the uh, any rim fires. You know, newer rim fires. Um, apparently, you can fire them, and it's not bad on them. And I get that, but the older ones, you're not supposed to. So where I just pointed, when you're looking at these old revolvers, look at that part of the cylinder. If it's peened out, you could get another cylinder from Ruger, and then you would naturally, at that point, I would also put a new firing pin. But that's just something you want to look at. If you're getting them for collector status, you know, actually, this looks really good, and the teeth on it look really sharp, really crisp. This revolver, to me, in my opinion, it's kind of really, it's been shot very little very little we could say maybe anywhere from say a couple hundred rounds to I don't know a thousand that's not a lot that's not a lot on a little single action revolver like this so here's the face the face looks really good that looks that looks outstanding that, that's man this thing I'm telling you it's been a sitter this is a very tight revolver and uh, Miss Highway, she's going to get to go shoot this. This will be one that's a shooter for her. So she's essentially got a mechanically uh, close to new revolver. 
on some of these revolvers you'll see where in between the cylinders they'll put the last three digits of the uh, serial number of the revolver but I'm not seeing them that doesn't mean they're not there sometimes they're hard to see maybe my my lighting is not right but I'm just not seeing them but on some cylinders you'll see them others that they're just not on there all right and I'm gonna just say this loosely I could actually be wrong so I would say this revolver probably didn't come with a magnum cylinder on the magnum cylinders it seems like they marked those because they were interchanging with the factory to match them so they marked them to make sure that when they boxed it they had the correct cylinders with it so I would say because this doesn't have the um, last three numbers of the serial number this wasn't a magnum uh, revolver but I could be wrong don't just take that for what it's worth okay I'm just throwing that comment out there and, and I could be wrong so um, we got our cylinder out we got our base pin out now one thing I'm not going to do absolutely not going to do I'm not going to go into the grips um, okay a couple things one no it doesn't have the transfer bar but that doesn't mean it wasn't converted the old Ruger 3 screws if you send them back to Ruger, they would convert it with the new transfer bar and new action and send it back with the parts. All right? But some guys would put the old parts back in. So the only way you know if it hasn't been converted is if you pull the grips, then you pull the grip frame, and you look right under the frame for the stamping. And if it's got the factory stamp, that means it was converted okay so the only way we know is if we tear this down but I'm not going to do that and I'll tell you why these grips these are rare if I crack these I'm gonna it's gonna bum me out really bad if I had a situation where I had to work on this that's no problem I can take these off I can put them back on with finesse and not crack them but I always say if there's no need don't tear into it so the actions tight I'm not worried about it the other thing if you get a revolver like this and you want to clean it out when you're all done you can get some uh, um, action cleaner in the can and you can get down there and you can rinse it out and then you can put a little oil into there and that's plenty good enough that beats pulling it apart and kind of messing it up okay so all right um, what I'm going to, uh, okay, this is what I use on all my rim fires. I want to say something. Uh, I apologize, those are my steel targets. I hang them on my, my bench. Um, it's a beautiful sound, isn't it? Okay. Um, every once in a while, like, I'll have someone from work or a friend, they can't get their, like, a, let's say they got a rim fire semi auto rifle or a semi auto pistol, and it's not ejecting cases, it's not feeding, and they're all frustrated. And they'll bring it to me. Well, what I'll do is generally I'll take it out and and I'll I'll shoot it to verify what it's doing. But then right there on my tailgate, I'll clean it up and turn right around, <laughs> and the rifle will run. It'll it'll perform perfect, or the pistol will. Especially with a rim fire, you have to keep it clean. Okay, don't have this mentality. Oh, I can go x amount of rounds no don't, don't do that that's bad news so this is uh by montana extreme this is the rimfire solvent man you want a good solvent right there every bottle of these sold they they uh, they, they, they donate one dollar to the um um united states shooting team this is fabulous stuff okay i'll put a link in the description box below check it out a little goes a long way and um so um, make sure you don't spill it. Uh, now, what I do, you can start out, you know, like you'll have a lot of instructions that will say, you know, to soak the bore in the cylinder. Start out with a patch on a, a jag. And this is the Montana Extreme Jags. The jags go two ways. Man, you get excellent coverage with this. I prefer to start out with just a, uh, um, a brush. And I'm going to tell you this right now. I don't have any nylon brushes. I need to get some. I've worn mine out. But with the Montana Extreme, this stuff is it's stout. It, it'll 
it'll it'll it'll kill your your uh, brass brushes. So um, I'm not doing myself a favor by using this brass brush, but that's okay. I've got a lot of these, so um, but I need to get some more nylon. So basically, um, you know, I just put a little bit on this bad boy, just like that, and this is how we do it. Don't care, sorry guys, I'll get that where you can see it. Okay. Okay, I've got I've got good coverage on it, and really good coverage. I just need a little more. Um, a lot of guys don't, they don't care for cleaning firearms. I'm thinking it'll make it nice. Get that brush. Or get that rod. Man, that, this, these rods, they remind me of old skateboards I rode as a teenager, the smooth bearings in them. Really super smooth, okay? So it, it makes it nice. So what I'm doing is, um, I'm just... I'm just soaking the bore, that's all I'm doing. Try, and, try to be graceful with your solvent, a little goes a long way, you know. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to let that sit. I always take advantage of my solvent, like, you know, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just, I'm just going to tell you this. Sometimes, you know, you'll hear where someone will say, oh, a, a solvent works fast, you don't have to let it sit very long. You know what, I, I don't do that. Whatever solvent I'm using, just know know this, with a solvent, the longer it sits, the more effective it's gonna be, okay? So, since you got the solvent on there, let it sit. There's nothing wrong with that. I um <laughs> I like to um see this is how I should be doing it. It's just being a slob and a drip all over the mat, but you know, you can't take me into you know a China shop either. But I I uh I like to clean firearms. There's times that it's not convenient you have to do other things but I'll tell you what when I'm out mowing the lawn I'd much rather be you know mess around with a firearm that's for sure you know so I'm getting good coverage you know so now my uh, my solvent is, is working for me I'm gonna get into here a little bit just a little bit very nice this is a, this really is a, a nice revolver. It's very nice. So, now I'm going to put a little on the face of the cylinder. And once again, solvent and time, they go hand in hand. Don't fall for this, uh, you know, thing where, um, hang on guys, i got to find my, my brush. Oh, there's my brush. You know, I know where my brush is at? My brush is exactly where I hung it. <laughs> anyway, you know, um, there's a lot of marketing schemes out there where, you know, someone wants to promote a product and they'll tell you how fast and convenient it works, you know. But, you know what? Solvent is solvent. And even your strongest of solvents, I mean, you can get some crazy strong solvents like Montana Extreme but still give them a chance you know why not you know nice man that's looking good looking really good 
I've got excellent covers. I really don't need any more of this, but why not? You know, a little extra makes it feel like it's going to be more clean, right? So, one thing that a lot of the newer generations, they don't really get taught this. When I grew up, everybody knew when you went in a gun shop, it's like um, when you touched a gun, it was just literally beat into our heads that, uh, you know, the salt from your sweat, that's a really bad thing on guns, you know. You know, now, aside from, like, you know, your polymer. See, that's why we don't really uh, learn that today. Everything's polymer, and not everything, but more so, you know, and then you get your, uh, you know, so many different firearm changes where the, the sodium from your sweat doesn't affect it to where there's not this emphasis anymore on, you know, hey, if you pick an old, uh, you know, revolver up or a 1911 or, or something made from steel, you want to be careful, you know. With my revolvers, like all my firearms in my safe, I have a, a dedicated towel that has a little oil on it. So if I pull something out of my safe and I want to look at it, I wipe it down when I'm done. If I want to play with it for a little bit and, you know, sit there and cock it and cock it and cock it and spin it and twirl it and, you know, play Audie Murphy and you know, pretend I'm John Wayne, that's cool. That's, that's really cool. When you're done, you grab that solvent rag and you wipe it down and you look at it, you know. So remember that. That's kind of like, um, uh, for me, it is an absolute no-no to eat potato chips and, and uh, touch a firearm. Even a uh, polymer. Because I stay in the habit, <laughs> you know. Um, probably shouldn't eat potato chips when you're handling components and oils and solvents anyway. Because if you do that, you can end up, you know, semi-retarded. Or you could be full retarded like me. See, yeah, that's what happens. I'm just saying, okay. And I hope you appreciate my honesty here, okay. So what I'm doing is I'm taking advantage of time, solvent and time, while my solvents are sitting in the bore and sitting in the chambers of that cylinder, I'm scrubbing it. And another thing, don't let someone tell you, well, it should only take you so many minutes to clean a firearm. You know what? I'll tell you something. If you're in battle, you should only spend so many minutes. But when you're enjoying it, you spend the time you want, okay? That's all I have to say about that. Man, the cylinder turned out really good. This thing, I'm telling you, it hasn't been shot much. So now what we're going to do... how I do this 25 times
don't, I'm going to uh, say something. You see how when I go in here like this and you just kind of feel that rod just kind of hitting the crown. Some guys like freak out on that, you know, and <laughs> that barrel steel is a lot harder than this steel. <laughs> the thousands and thousands of revolvers that I've cleaned and of the hundreds that I've personally owned, I have never hurt a crown that way. Now, it, whenever you can come in from the breech side, you always want to just by default. But it, if you're just taking your time like I was doing and you just kind of like feel that uh, you know, it's kind of like, um, you can just feel it kind of like a miniature speed bump. Don't worry about it. Okay. Now, for your, um, your bore, okay, you see how I'm scrubbing the cylinder back and forth like this? That's okay. But don't try and do that in the bore because these brushes, they're a particular diameter. The bore is a tighter diameter than these cylinders, so you can't do that. And you'll actually destroy that brush. Um, well, how you want to do it is on your brush, and you come in like this, go all the way through and come out the breech side, then pull it. If you pull it halfway through, you'll bend those brushes and then they won't have that that scrubbing effect okay but now on the cylinder like this that's that's not an issue and I even have some uh, um, brushes and actually where my net last nylon brush went I put a little um, double lot steel wool kind of wound it in there I was cleaning a revolver for a guy and I just kind of needed that and so you know you can scrub your cylinder this way that's has no issue at all. Okay. Now, make sure you do this. Hear that little clicking? You'll kind of hear that rod. No, don't worry about that. If if you're sitting there and you're just jamming it away, yeah, I suppose you can have issues. But you know, we don't do that, do we? Okay. So now. Got a little extra solvent in here. I'm gonna work this uh, base pin over. said um, you know solvent and time is your best friend so what we did is uh, we we scrubbed the bore 25 times and we we scrubbed our our cylinder really good so now let's let's sit for a couple minutes while we scrub our gun now it's not bad to do something like this and then go and eat dinner and get let it you know let it sit and then you can come out and scrub her up more if you want you know so, what's wrong with that? Very nice. Very nice. Now, whatever you wipe your bench with, that's not the rag you're going to use to polish your revolver with. Okay? And put that rag, hang that rag somewhere specific you know, so you know you don't grab that rag again let's get our jag on here this Ruger is going to come together really nice it's going to have another happy life doing what it wants to do be shot in a country where it has the freedom to be shot don't you love that okay that's how this works the closer to the center you stab that the harder it is to get to the bore Remember, your cylinder uh, has a larger diameter hole than the bore. So for the bore, we're going to stab it closer to um, the, the corner. And then we can just slide it through like that. Okay. And look at there. Okay. That's actually not too bad. 
that really isn't too bad. We probably, you know, washed a lot out as I was scrubbing and rinsing, but um, I've seen a lot worse than that. So that kind of indicates to me, yeah, man, this thing's cleaning up fast. Guys, look at that, man. That revolver was a sitter. It's just a sitting, man. This thing is a gold mine. Try not to ram it through like that. But if you get the breech, that's brass and that's steel. Don't worry about it. Guys, they get all freaked out, you know. And uh, now we're going to do the uh, chamber holes in the cylinder. Get somewhere near the center. And then if it's hard, like if it's difficult like that, then just re stab it more towards this side okay now this is what I do okay first off I want to say something I'm not trying to be a salesman for Montana extreme but you know what I am gonna sell you on it because it's what I use and this is my money I bought it uh, these are the best patches you'll ever get so I take the same patch and I just run it through all the cylinders that's what I do okay now there's one other way you could have done this the other way you could have done this is you could have actually sprayed each one of those cylinder holes out with your solvent and then ran these through. You know, if you just wanted to get all the crud out, um, you can do that. Um, it's just that patches are cheaper than solvent. Look how clean that's coming. Man, alive. Man. Okay, that one I missed before. Because it kind of rolls back and forth. You tend to kind of miss a hole here or there, you know. Now, if something happens, that you take this and you stab through to your finger, there ain't no crying on my channel. If you're going to cry, go cry to mommy. You'll be crying to me. I'll just look at it and say, well, don't do it again. So I use one, two, three, six patches. That's how many patches I've used. And now, oh man, wipe this down. I am so excited. I got a nice, nice revolver. Very. I, I would like to tell you it was a fair price, but I got to tell you, I kind of stole it. I kind of, I knew I did, but that's okay. are all jabbed. So, now, okay, you, you know, um, there's a lot of ways you can do this. Um, I'll, I'll show you one thing you can do, and I, I like this uh, rim oil, you know, because of this. You know, you can kind of clean that out, and I, I would recommend that. I forgot to do that, but I'm getting kind of excited, as you guys can probably notice. It's, 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 it's dust. 
that's what's in there. It's it, it was it's pretty clean. Just dust. Okay, that's a great sign right there. So what we can do? Take our cylinder, drop it into position here. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm a newbie. Okay. Now, remember, don't don't impede the cylinder. Okay. Okay. Keep your fingers from pushing. You don't want to push that cylinder. Let the let the cylinder. Okay. You can, you can kind of jiggle it now, and watch. Woo! Oh man, that went in all different than how it came out. Let me tell you. So now what we can do is we can do this. This right here is what I keep on my solvent rags, or my oil rags for all my uh, handguns. When it gets a little, little dried out, I spray a little on it, and a little goes a long way. Who might that be? <laughs> That's one of my awesome subscribers there. <laughs> you guys are all awesome out there. I love you all. Love you all to death. Now, one little thing I'm going to do. Don't go nowhere. Montana Extreme is my that's my main go-to. Um, uh, I wish they had a something like this in the spray can. I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, this is called uh, Zero Friction. <laughs> okay. A little goes a long way. Good stuff, and I like the needle applicator. So there we go. Oh my gosh, that is like that's a difference of night and day. It even looks different. Um, how much oil do you want on your revolver? Enough that it protects it, but not so much that you can't grip it good. And so the nice thing to do is like right now, you know, I'm wiping it with this towel, but then as I keep it wiped down with my, uh, you know, my regular towel that I wipe all my revolvers down, I'll just have a nice, a nice film on there. And it, that's just the way to go right there. And look at that. I even stopped the cylinder in the position in which it was stored in for years. That is awesome. And it made my day. Guys and gals, that's the end of this video. God bless. We'll see you on the next.